Hey everybody, Brian Sharpneck and Scott Dorner with the Digital Solutions team here uh, talking to you about LabCal. So what is LabCal, right? LabCal is a module that runs within WIMS, which is our data management solution that schedules your samples, tracks tests associated with those samples. Um, obviously, we've made significant changes over the past couple of years. Scott, you want to walk us through that? Yeah, so customers have requested a, a bunch of features that move us closer to a LIMS system, like yeah. stuff like billing, the ability to add barcoding into it, tracking of ad hoc samples, seasonal scheduling, and, yeah. and the ability to track our analytical runs, oh, the way cool. that, that a lab really wants to enter in their data. Let me go ahead and show you kind of what's new in LabCal. Yeah, let's see. So what I have is the classic calendar that we've seen. It is a color-coded calendar, and it shows these samples are due today. That's that blue color. The yellow one is overdue. This pink color means it was received yesterday. So I'm just gonna take you through a, a normal workflow. So the first thing would be, is I'm gonna highlight these samples and I'm gonna print the chain of custody, okay? So I'm gonna bring this report up, and this report is customizable. If you know wow. WIMS, you're gonna know how to set up a report like this, and it's going to identify the samples that you need to take today. The other thing that this particular customer needed was the ability to barcode. So we've added barcoding in, uh, you can, you know, you, when you get your sample in, you hit the barcode, and in LabCal, it'll just move you right to that sample. And again, this is really important for uh, customers that aren't going to have like two samples a day like here, but maybe <laughs> 20 or 30 or 50 samples a day, barcoding becomes much more important because it allows you to enter your data more accurately. Now that is cool. So the other thing we can do after that is, so we print the chain of custody, you go out and take the samples, the next thing you're going to do is I'm going to highlight those samples, and I'm going to receive those samples in. So in here, I can come in and I'm going to enter in my sample information. So I'm just going to say it was sampled by Mr. Sharpnack, that's All right. you. All right. And I can also specify who received it in the lab, okay? Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to save those changes. And those samples are marked as now pink, uh, meaning they're received in the lab. So the next thing I want to do is now I'm going to enter results in. So we've got this enter results by batch or by analytical run oh, might okay. be another way to say it. And then this is something that's very new. And right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click new. I'm going to set up a new batch. I'm going to add in my tests. And I'm going to set my sample dates. I only want to look at today and yesterday. Okay. When I click refresh, it's going to show me these are the samples that I have that have in the lab that are ready to be run that need TSS and VSS that have those tests in there. So I go ahead and click create batch. It's going to assign a batch number to it. It gives it a name. I can edit that. And in here, it shows all of that data. And now I can go ahead and I can enter in my results. I can enter in my analyst, my finish analyst, start analyst, all that data. But what's really nice here is I can add in my QC. So this test has been set up to do a duplicate, the TSS test. So when I do it, I highlight, highlighted Influence Spring, and now it's going to associate that duplicate with that test, okay? Excellent. So what I do here is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in the TSS result of 255. I'm going to go to here, and let's say the duplicate is 233, and notice it automatically calculates that relative awesome. percent difference. And this is very different than the way we used to have to do this in WIMS. What we used to do in WIMS, as you know, is create a lot of variables, <laughs> like a tedious, lot of variables. Really We'd have to create one for the influent dupe, the yep. effluent dupe, yep. all of the dupes that you could do. And then when you had to report on that, you had to use more advanced reporting features to bring all that data together to right. just graph it. Now it's a single variable, very it easy to use. simplifies everything. Correct. It simplifies the setup, it simplifies the use, and it simplifies Perfect. the reporting. That's amazing. So once I enter in my data, I, I simply save that. And those results, as you know, go into the WIMS database. Now, beautiful. so what can I do with reporting on this? Well, here, if I want to go back here, we've already seen a chain of custody. Mm -hmm. I can look at this Influence Spring sample. And I'm going to go ahead and print a sample okay. order, or what we would call a certificate of analysis. That's how this customer wanted to do it. Nice. So here's this report. And again, this is just going to give the detail of that sample if you have to ship that out or file it or sign off on it. But it shows the sample. Again, we barcoded the sample number. It shows the information, who took it, when it was received. It gives you the results and the methods. Yep. And it also gives you the billing information. So this has been recently added because, again, a lot of the municipalities asked us, hey, we have small municipalities that we do testing for. We're not a commercial lab. 
but maybe we kind of are kind of a commercial lab. We want some of that same functionality. Right, so now very simply I can associate sample costs, I can associate test costs, and it sums it up and now I can send that to the client and uh, bill them and make money. Or a lot of customers that don't do that will still enter this information so that right. they can kind of justify their costs so they can say this is why you funded the lab, this is what we're doing, this is what it would cost if you went out to a commercial lab. So. And because, and because this is a part of a module, part of WIMS, I can go in there and I can configure reports, uh, run some wizard reports, things like that, right? Right, so for a lab manager, they now get all the benefit of WIMS. That data, that TSS data, and all those data requests you get, now you can do that at your fingertips. So awesome. here's just a classic WIMS report. Yeah. This is that wizard report that we've, that, <laughs> yeah, that we've done a thousand times in our demos, exactly. And here it just shows the TSS throughout the plan. I got my influent and effluent data, it trends it. And again, this is just a classic WIMS report that are just showing the results. Right. But now if lab managers get those requests, they don't have to spend hours digging through stuff, right. writing stuff down Excel. They just turn oh, it right out. It it's already in WIMS. Perfect. So, the next thing we want to look at is um, the QC ability. So again, like I said earlier, hey, if I got this QC data available, uh, how can I chart that? I don't need to do all this complicated reporting and right. things that we used to have to do in WIMS to get that out. So I'm just going to go to Graph Pack and Variable Analysis Graph. I'm going to go ahead and choose that variable. Okay. My relative percent difference. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to check some stuff off. And what I got here is it's going to load up that variable. I've defined some quality control limits for it. Perfect. And I'm just going to see the trend graph in the histogram. I don't need year over year. I don't need these other graphs. And I'm going to apply some QC rules. So I'm going to click graph, and it's just going to pop that graph up. So I asked for these two graphs. I've got a histogram, which is showing the buckets of the data, where your data falls. Right. And I do see I've got some situations where my relative percent difference is above my my upper warning limit. Luckily, it's a really small bar. That's a good thing, but we, <laughs> we wish that bar was gone. Right. So let's take a look at that. So I'm a little bit more familiar with the trend graph. So that's what I have here over the last month. And I see here I've got some points that are getting close to the control limit. I can click this QC button right here and notice it highlights yeah. these two points. And it says I've detected two consecutive points are above the warning limit. So the software can automatically apply QC rules such as five point sloping in one direction, so you're falling off a cliff maybe. Or, um, you know, in this case, the two consecutive points, it's pretty easy for a user or for a human to pick up, hey, that one point is above the control limit, but it's a lot more difficult to count five consecutive yeah, points right. and know that it's going up, and you may, be, uh, you may be in a situation where you need to look yeah, at right. your cleaning procedures or your lab procedures to find out why uh, your QC is doing that. Very cool, so obviously we've added a lot more features, a lot more benefits into LabCal. Uh, so how is this different than a LIMS system? So LabCal is a great sample scheduler and tracker, first and foremost. So if you're a municipal lab and most of your ah, samples are yeah. scheduled, LabCal is a great fit. Now if you're a pharmaceutical or a commercial lab mm. and you do a bunch of ad hoc samples, you're not scheduling your samples, or you need a lot of instrument interfaces to some high-end instruments, things like that, then you're going to be wanting to look at a, a LIM system. Yeah, makes sense. And plus, we don't want to break the bank. Correct. With LabCal, if you already have WIMS, it's a pretty simple add-on. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is fantastic. I really appreciate you coming by and giving us a quick demonstration of this. So, Scott, thank you. Uh, if anybody would like any more information, please contact your local Hawk representative. Appreciate everybody's time. Take Thanks. care.